you find yourself responding to work emails after hours? Unless your job is to save the world, those emails can probably wait until tomorrow. Set some boundaries with automated email responses. This Microsoft Power Automate flow will auto-reply to any emails that arrive in your inbox outside of your working hours. The flow will move those emails into a separate folder so you can tackle them when you're back on the clock. If you're interested in learning how to set boundaries and create this automation, keep watching. In Power Automate, I'm going to create a new instant cloud flow. We're going to start by triggering this flow manually. This will make it easy to test and troubleshoot the flow before using the automated trigger. This step is optional. You can use the dynamic content timestamp from the manually trigger a flow action if you prefer. For this tutorial, I want to mimic the receive date and time of an email to demonstrate how the flow works. To do this, we'll use two inputs in the manually trigger a flow action. One is for the date and one is for the time. The time should be in 24 hour format. I'll use a text input for that. Next, insert a compose action. I'll use this compose action to format the date and time to look like a timestamp. If you're using the dynamic content timestamp, you can insert it here. First, I'll join the date and time together. Insert a concat expression. Insert the date input. Add a comma, single quotes, a capital T, place your cursor outside of the last single quote, add another comma, insert the time input, add another comma, single quotes, a colon, and two zeros. Next, wrap the concat expression in a format date time expression. Place your cursor inside the format date time expression and add a comma, single quotes, insert the ISO 8601 date and time format. Outlook stores the received time of emails in UTC format. To mimic that, I'll wrap the format date time expression in an add hours expression. Place your cursor inside the add hours expression, add a comma, and enter the number of hours to offset the UTC time based on your local time zone. In my case, I'll add a seven. Adding scope actions to this flow is optional. I'll be using it to help group different actions together. I'll use the first scope action to group all the actions for the date and time the email was received. Add a convert time zone action. I'll use this action to convert the output of the compose action above. Currently, it's storing the mimicked timestamp. Yours may be storing the timestamp the flow was triggered. Later, we'll replace this with the received time of the email. In the base time field, insert the output from the compose action above. For the source time zone, search for coordinated universal time. For the destination time zone, select your local time zone. For the format string, select round trip. Next, add a compose action. I'll use this action to hold the day of the week from the output of the convert time zone action. Insert a day of week expression. Insert the converted time here. Add another compose action. I'll use this action to hold the time from the output of the convert time zone action. Insert a format date time expression. Insert the converted time here. Add a comma, single quotes, enter a capital HH, a colon, and lowercase mm. Add a scope action. I'll use this scope action to group my work start and end times. You can customize this to suit your needs. Remember to enter your times in 24 hour or military format. Add a condition. I'll add a condition action to check whether the received email falls within my working hours. To do this, I'll create two groups within the condition action. The first group will check whether the received email falls within my working days, Monday to Friday. I'll use the output from the received day of week compose action, which returns a number representing the day of week. Monday equals one, Tuesday equals two, and so on. First, I'll add a group, and I'll move this first row down. I'll add the output from the received day of week compose action. Select is greater than or equal to, and insert one for Monday. I'll insert the output from the received day of week compose action. Select is less than or equal to, and insert five for Friday. I'll make sure that the group uses an and condition, and that each row is selected. Add another group. This group will check whether the received email falls within my working hours, which are between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. I'll add the output from the received time compose action. Select is greater than or equal to, and insert the output from the work start compose action. Add a row, and insert the output from the received time compose action. Select is less than or equal to, and insert the output from the work end compose action. That's it. If the received time falls within working hours, the condition will be true. If not, the condition will be false. Let's test it out. First, I'll select a date and insert a time to mimic an email being received outside of working hours. The result of the condition is false. This means that the received time falls outside of working hours. Let's run one more test. I'll select a date and insert a time to mimic an email being received within working hours. The result of the condition is true. This means that the received time falls within working hours. Now that I've tested the flow to ensure the condition action works, I'm ready to replace the manual trigger with an automated trigger. Delete the manual trigger. 
Search for when new email arrives. I'll be using version 3. Here you can specify whether or not you'd like to trigger this flow if an email arrives in a specific folder. By expanding the advanced options, you can also choose to only trigger the flow when an email comes from a specific sender, has certain keywords in the subject, or is marked with a specific level of importance. In the Compose action below, I'll delete this expression and add the receive time from the action above. Since the rest of my actions relied on the output of this Compose action, I don't need to make any additional changes to my flow. Before we go any further, I'll send a test email to myself. In this Compose action, the receive date time is in UTC format. This action has converted the receive date time from UTC into my local time zone. And the result of this condition is false, meaning that this email has been received outside of working hours. If the email is received within working hours, no action needs to be taken. If the email is received outside of working hours, I'd like to send an automated reply. I'll add a reply to email v3 action. Search for message ID and insert it here. I'm going to copy and paste some email content here. The next few actions are optional. After I've replied to an email, I want to move it into a specific folder and mark it as unread. Alternatively, you can leave the email in whichever folder it arrived in. I'll add a move email v2 action. Search for the message ID and insert it here. Select the folder you'd like to move the message to. When this action is used, the email is marked as read by default. Add a mark as read or unread v3 action. Insert the message ID here. In the mark as dropdown, select no. In Outlook, I just received the email. The reply has been sent and it's been moved into the specified folder. I'll right click on my folder and I'll add it to my favorites. This way it appears at the top of my sidebar in Outlook. What other Outlook email automations are you looking to create? Let me know in the comments down below. If you plan to set boundaries by creating this Power Automate flow, please consider giving this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new Outlook automation tutorials. Thanks for watching.